Hey everybody, Ed Holmwood, the Old Guy Hi-Fi channel. Uh, being a savvy YouTuber, um, today's topic is chosen primarily to get a million views and 10,000 subscribers. It's a topic I know all of you have been waiting with bated breath and, and concerned about for many, many years. Uh, and I understand, you know, since about 2012 or 2013, we've been without the Microsoft Zoom. Can you believe it? Oh my goodness. So today's conversation, today's video is going to be about the Microsoft Zune. Zune hardware, Zune software, all things Zune. Because again, this is going to dominate the news media today. It's going to dominate YouTube. Mr. Beast, stand back. Watch out for old guy hi-fi. So anyway, you may be familiar. The Zune was Microsoft's answer to the Apple iPod. It came out a couple of years later and it was... A very good product, although it never gained the traction or the appreciation that the Apple products did. Um, and a lot of the people, like I, I had an original uh, iPod, and I loved the device. It was really cool. But iTunes, the software, was horrible. It was junk. It was huge. It was intrusive. I'd organize my music the way I wanted to by the genres I chose, and it would go through and reorganize everything and undo all of the, all that I did after spending an awful long time doing it. So I got really, really disgruntled with the walled garden that Apple put forth as iTunes with the iPod. So I got a first generation Zune. I enjoyed it a lot. Now the Zune was introduced, I think in 99 or 2000. Um, and again, it really didn't make much of an impact. It was a good product. It was made by Toshiba. Um, and they kept marketing the product through to the end of 2012. And there were three generations of the standard Zune and then one generation of the Zune HD. What you're going to see today is a Zune HD and a third generation Zune 80 gig uh, unit. Now, the units, it evolved. Zune became Zune on Windows Phone and it eventually became Xbox Music, which is where they're trying to jam everything to. And then, of course, it became Groove Music, which is horrible. Um, I think Groove Music still in Windows. I don't know. I don't use it. But the Zune software was good, and you'll see it in a second. I'm going to go ahead and launch it right now. So the Zune software allowed you to communicate with your Zune device, and it uh, allowed you to take advantage of the Zune Marketplace. And the Zune Marketplace was actually quite good. It was very much like the iTunes Store. Um, you paid a subscription, and with, with your subscription, you got the ability to download an unlimited number of mp3 files albums single tracks whatever it was you wanted uh, there were videos available there were even games available for it um, i think there was an auto racing game and i think there was um i don't remember i didn't play any of the games so it didn't really matter much to me but with that subscription it was all you could eat now you were leasing the songs if you stopped paying your subscription those songs would disappear off your zoom now you were allowed through zoom to have 10 downloads a month and i don't remember if they were individual tracks or albums my feeling is they were tracks. And those you got to keep. They weren't DRM protected. So many of us who didn't like the whole idea of DRM, and once we started to see that Zune was failing, there was a piece of software out of Germany called Audials, and I talk about it in uh, with the hardware devices, that allowed me to remove the DRM from all of my uh, MP3 files that I had downloaded from Zune. So that's how I wound up with 32,349 songs, on 2,629 albums from 748 artists. And they're all MP3. Now you could choose in the settings of this software what resolution you wanted to download those MP3s as. Um, the standard default resolution I think was 128 or 156 kilobits per second, which was really low resolution, but you could choose to download at up to 320 kilobits per second, which is what I did choose. Although I have a ton of files before I realized that the resolution really mattered because this is early on. Um, the other thing too is you could then transfer the, the, all of the uh, songs or whatever songs you wanted to your device. And I have my Zune HD connected up and I can look at it and see what music is on it, whether or not I had videos, pictures, podcasts. Friends were things through the social network. You could share songs with other Zune users 
Um, and again, they were just, they could play it three times, that song three times in three days, and then it would disappear off their Zune. But it was a way to turn people on to new content. And then there were apps, which of course I didn't bother with, but again, there were some game apps and things like that. So in your Zune, you can see exactly what you've got. You can see how much storage there is, how much free space you have, and so forth. So it was really kind of a, a great device from that standpoint. Now this is back in the days before we had smartphones. And so, and I traveled an awful lot, spent a lot of time on airplanes. So being able to take my music with me and have it, you know, be the songs I want, because there wasn't any Wi-Fi in the planes in those days. And, it, and if there was, it was expensive as it still is. And I would have, I could listen for hours. I, I flew Trans-Pacific, you know, in the 12 or 13 hours from Chicago to Tokyo, I had, uh, with my 80 gig, I had so many songs I'd never heard the same song twice if I didn't want to. So it was really rewarding in that regard. And it sounded very good too. In the Zune HD, there's some EQ settings you can mess with. Uh, it will play a lossless Windows media audio fo file format, uh, and which is, of course, equivalent to FLAC. Um, and so it was really good. And then when you put songs in, if you had your own songs, you could rip CDs and it'll come down here and open up the CD thing. Now, it's not going to find a CD because there's no CD in the in the... I don't have a CD drive in this particular PC and there's no CD in. But when you, if you wanted to rip a CD, you could rip it as MP3. You could rip it as a lossless file. And you, if you did rip it as an MP3, you could choose the, the uh, quality of 320 kilobits. And then you could rip it as an audio CD, a, a data CD, and then you could choose how fast you want to burn. And I think the fastest was eight times. Um, and that was pretty, pretty good. Um, and it worked really well. So you had a lot of uh, options on, you know, bringing your own music into the Zune collection. And actually, right now, the Zune uh, music this uh, software plays the, the audio just fine. Sounds actually pretty good. Um, although I'm not going to, doesn't replace Artivana for me. But anyway, that's an overview of the Zune software. Like I said, it worked really well. Um, one of the things, you know, that gives you the ability to do is it will fill in album titles for you. If I go ahead and click on that, I'm going to pause that so I don't get a copyright strike. But you can look at the song and each individual song you can sync with my, I can sync with my Zune HD, add to a playlist, add to a burn list. I can rate it and it'll show me the properties. And in this case, it's a 192 kilobit MP3 file. And it'll give you the composer, conductor, genre, all that other kind of stuff. So it was a good piece of software for music discovery through the marketplace. It was a good piece of software for managing and curating your own collection of either uh, CDs that you, you know, ripped into MP3 or WMA files and or the CD, uh, the files and albums that you downloaded from the marketplace. So I really enjoyed the Zune. I used it for years. It finally went away in, I think, 2012 or 2013. Um, the last generation Zune HD, this unit, uh, actually got great reviews. Donald Bell from CNET uh, back in, I think, 09, gave it a great review, gave it a glowing review. It had OLED touchscreen, a built-in FM tuner, used your cable for your headphone uh, as an antenna, and also you'll see in the dock there's a, <laughs> a wire and FM antenna attached to the dock. And again, you could watch videos on your device at not 720p, but a decent resolution. It's a small screen. Um, and so it was really very rewarding. I really enjoyed it. And uh, so that's that. All right, we're gonna show you each individual piece of hardware, the docking stations and everything else. And then I'll be back at the end. Here are my two Zunes. On the left is a Zune HD, and on the right is a third generation Zune 80 gigabyte. The one on the left has a touchscreen, an OLD touchscreen. So it's really, really nice and easy to use. And if I can remember how to use it, that would be wonderful. Um, and I don't care about that. And then this one uses a scroll pad, which doesn't only works when you're in choosing music. Otherwise, you just push the button up or down. Got play, pause, and stop on that. And then both can output. They're both in their docks. So this can output on an HDMI, or it can output on composite video with a special cable, which I also have. This unit can output on... Uh, component video, red, green, blue, or YPRB, or it can output on an analog composite video and audio as well. 
There is a remote control that controls them. I only found the one remote. I'm not sure it's the same for both, but it does operate both units just fine. And so now we're going to turn those docks around and show you the back. We're going to take a look at the Zune HD dock first. You'll notice a 3.5 millimeter jack, and that's what's called AV out. So if you have the right cable, and I do, I'll show it to you in a little bit, it is composite video along with left and right analog audio. This, believe it or not, is an FM antenna because there's a tuner in that HD, Zoom HD. Then there's an optical spit if out, which would go to a D-to-A converter, which I have hooked up. I'll show you later. And then an HDMI out because the Zoom HD could output, if you had video stored on it, could output 720p HD video. Now on the 80 gig Zoom, it's a little bit different. It is still the AV output, which is analog audio, left and right, and composite video. And then you notice a switch. I can also output on red, green, blue, or YPRB component video. Now, the resolution of the unit never was greater than 480i, uh, standard NTSC. But you could stretch it on the screen. And I'll show what it look, they look like on the screen and everything else. So those are the docks for the Zune HD and the standard Zune 80 gig. So this is the screen you're greeted with when you uh, connect your Zune HD to a TV via the HDMI. Now the output of the Zune is 720p, this TV is 4K, so you're not going to get a chance to see very much. But as you can see, you have Choices Music videos, and the videos would output at 720p if that's what they were stored at on your Zune HD, but they'd only output 720p over the dock and the HDMI. If you just had the Zune by itself, you weren't going to get any better than about 480 on the small built-in LED screen. You have photos you can show. Radio, it has an FM tuner. And then Marketplace. And now, Marketplace was the Zoom Music Store. And the nice thing about that was you paid a monthly fee. And I, if I remember correctly, it was like 10 bucks or something. And you could download as many songs as you wanted to. It had a huge catalog. I mean, basically the same as the iTunes Music Store and all that stuff. Uh, and that's why these things were developed to compete against the Apple uh, iPad, iPod products. So you could download as much as you want to. And as long as you paid your monthly subscription fee, those files and those songs and albums would appear on your Zoom device. The minute you quit the service, all those songs would be offloaded because you're really only leasing them. Now, one thing Zoom did have that was nice is they had, you could do uh, 10 downloads a month and you got to keep those. Those were yours. Um, but if you were smart, and I did this, there was a piece of software, and I think it's still available, called Audials. And Audials allowed me to remove the DRM from the MP3 files so basically, I kept everything I downloaded. So it was all you can eat, basically. And I had, and you'll see, about 31 or 32,000 individual tracks um, that we removed the DRM on. The nice thing about that was, is if you, you know, didn't want to pay the fee, and obviously once Zune went away, none of the songs would have been available. So it worked out really well. So let's say we go into music, and we go ahead and choose something to play. And we're going to go to music. And we can choose artists by album, artist, playlist, song, genres, if you want to. We're just going to do it by artists. We'll go down here to The Cars. And then there's The Cars' first album, 1978. It shows a little detail underneath The Cars, but it's just, it's really hard to see that um, just because of the resolution of the screen is not great. Let me see if I can get this to focus a little better. There we go. And so now I can come over here and I can choose that album. And it'll give you all the songs and everything. And we hit play. And it'll come back and show you the album title. And then obviously a timer underneath. Now on the far right hand side, you could give it a heart if you liked it. It was a favorite. And it would be identified as that in your, in your catalog. Then there was the center one, which was repeat track or repeat album. And then on the far left, it was the shuffle play. Now once you started to play the music, after a, a period of time, it would go into a screensaver. And it was really cool and, and really graphic. And I'm going to go ahead and pause the video, wait for that to come on so you guys don't have to sit through it, and then I'll come back to you. So now this is the output from the Zoom 80 gig. And again, it wasn't high def unless you went in through the component, red, green, and blue outputs, and then you could, but my TV doesn't have a component input anymore. That's not very common. So I'm using the composite video. So I have the ability to go through my music, videos, pictures, social. Zoom had a way for you to share tunes Songs with other Zoom users, you guys could connect wirelessly and share it. And again, radio, same thing, had an FM tuner. And then, of course, the Zoom Marketplace. 
And then, of course, you go in and change settings and things like that. Now, you could only access settings on the Zune HD when it was undocked. So if we go into music and we can pick by genre, songs, playlists, artists, whatever we want to. So let's come down here and find something interesting about Crosby, Stills and Nash. And it'll show all of the albums that are available there. So we'll come down here and let's go CSN. Okay, and then it'll show us our songs. And again, the resolution is terrible, but it worked. It was pretty good. And then we can go ahead and hit the play and it'll play that song. And it'll give us album artwork and then the time and so forth and some information. And of course, uh, on the uh, right hand side, it shows battery strength. And right now the battery is being charged. Um, it shows repeat and then uh, I'm sorry, it shows shuffle and then repeat. You could repeat track or repeat the whole album if you went to the album and hit play. So that's what a Zune 80 gigabyte looks like uh, when it's connected through its dock to a television. Again, it was pretty compelling in the day. You can remember this is back in what, 2009-ish thereabouts, I think. I'll have more details in the regular body of the video. But anyway, there's that Zune 80 gig. Okay, well, I hope you found that interesting. Uh, the two different Zunes and their docks and the remote control and all the crazy connections to TVs and things like that. Um, I had a lot of fun with this product when I had it. I used it an awful lot. As I said, I traveled frequently. Um, so it was really valuable. And obviously when smartphones came out, and iPhones and Android phones and everything else, um, you know, you could use your phone. And actually, I was a Windows phone adopter, so I still used Zune on my first generation Windows phone. And on the second generation Windows phone, there was uh, the Groove Music app or the Xbox Music app. So I still did that. Uh, and also you could download music onto the internal drive of your phone or to a, a micro SD card. And then when I switched over to Android, obviously I used Spotify and Tidal and Cobuzz and all of those things. But in lieu of all that in the early days, um, the Zune was actually quite an interesting uh, proposition and I really, really enjoyed it. Well, I hope you found this weird niche video fun and interesting. <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm going to do strange stuff. It's just me. So if you liked it, please give me a thumbs up. I would really appreciate your subscription. Please check out my other videos. And if you have any suggestions or comments, please comment. I look at them. I will answer. Um, and if you have any questions about anything, please feel free to answer or excuse me, ask me and I'll answer on any of the videos that are uh, that are in my channel. Um, again, I monitor all that stuff. So I like to share information with everybody and I'd love to hear from you guys. So I really appreciate your time. I really appreciate your uh, view and thank you so very much and have a wonderful day.